All right, all, and welcome back to a new video previewing day four of the Galway Festival and day three of Glorious Goodwood. Uh, hopefully you guys have been enjoying these videos, uh, these day-by-day -day videos. It's obviously great to get into a bit of rhythm in these festivals uh, to go and do so. I know I'm in a different change of scenery here. I'm in a different room, so I think the lighting may be a little bit fuzzy. It's coming up a little bit fuzzy for me. Hopefully it doesn't come out too badly quality-wise, but that's just maybe a reasoning uh, if you were thinking that before. Good luck back on today again another one of these days unspectacular but in the end a small profit made steel bull uh, was was a good winner of the Malcolm uh, for us the very man won at go and also we were very unlucky Rochester house I uh, just got nutted out of one at and um, no sorry Goodwood I was about to say Newmarket at Goodwood and um, Dean Street Doll also placed Siskin was <sighs> Very close, uh, but didn't look like there was any excuses there. Mahath are very good. Uh, very interesting to see how, um, in the end of the season, I suppose, where where those all those horses at a mile will will line up. If you add in Palace Pier, maybe even Pinatubo back into the mix. But anyway, that's enough around for now. Uh, it is quite late on again. Apologies for that, but we need to get straight through this eight uh, race card at Galway and I have five for Goodwood as well. So very busy indeed tomorrow. Starting off with the 4.45, the two mile novice hurdle. I'm going to uh, be backing Anna Benina here at 2-1 to one for John McConnell and Sean O'Keefe taking the ride. She was third in a listed race on debut, actually, over in Musselburgh, on debut over hurdles for this yard and then was pulled up twice by a burning victory at Ferdy House before uh, being pulled up also in the Mayor's Novice at Cheltenham behind Concertista. Reappeared when very unlucky when falling, uh, sorry, unseating at... Uh, Bellewstown at two out looked like she was going to go on and win that day but Julie compensated when winning at Cork there last week uh, she's getting a lot of weight from her main rival Sam Daru uh, who was obviously third in the Fred Winter so brings good form to the table but a lot of the weight concession uh, puts me on Dana Benina here and two to one is the price I'll be taking 515 is a two mile six furlong beginner's chase and I'm going to take a chance here and demand a lobe uh, for Henry de Bromhead and Rachel Blackmore five to one <coughs> Well, second to uh, No Mead's Dream Conti on Chase debut and Stable debut um, for De Bromhead last year. And the wheels then suddenly came off. Now, he was running in quite decent races behind the likes of Cashback, Royal Rendezvous and Faheen over Christmas. Uh, but wasn't able to land a blow. His jumping kind of fell apart as well. And didn't particularly reappear with much gusto last time out. Uh, but hopefully will have come on for that run. Uh, De Bromhead's horses usually jump well. So he's a bit of an outlier in that regard. And if he can jump well, I think he has got the ability to be in the shake-up here. Five to one is the price. The 5.45, the 2 mile 2 furlong, grade 3, novice chase. I'm going to take a chance, and it is a chance, on Russian Diamond in this. Uh, Diamond Dozen is a horse I've backed a few times now this summer already, and she was very good last time out. But I'm going to take a chance on Russian Diamond. I think he's got the best form in the book uh, with what he's achieved. Winning a Galway bumper, beating Risk Factor, who obviously won a Leopardstown bumper and was close sec well was second, not that close, but it was second behind appreciation in the Grade 2 bumper at Leopardstown on, in the Dublin Racing Festival. He then went on to win a maiden hurdle at Down Royal over Christmas before finishing second to A1 and third to Barrington Court on reappearance. Now that third to Barrington Court looked like a bit of a pipe opener. Chasing debut in a grade three is a big ask, but owned by the Mee family, trained by Emmett Mullins, ridden by David Mullins, usually Galway specialists. Hopefully Russian Diamond might be just a class above. The 6.15, a two mile handicap hurdle, not for some of the greatest horses on planet Earth, but I'm going to take a chance on Acclamatio uh, for Tony Martin, Robbie Parr takes the ride 9-1, to one. it's an each way price uh, running off a mark of 95 this horse, uh, I will remember winning once on this horse on the flat at Thurless off a mark of 61 and Robbie Colgan rode him absolutely hacked up that day hasn't won since but has put in some two eye-catching efforts this uh, month coming fourth over hurdles on Ben Harvey the, the young lad rode him and seventh on the flat last time out when staying on over a mile four obviously too short of a trip this should leave him cherry ripe for this race upgraded ran a decent enough race for similar connections um, today so hopefully Acclamatio can be in the shake-up it should be a four-place race nine to one doesn't seem the worst value the 6.45 is the Galway hurdle itself and like the Galway plate I'll be giving you two darts for this. Uh, one, The main one really being Aramax at 11-1. to 1. Uh, Obviously my dad put me onto this horse uh, to back 
we, we both ended up backing it for the Boodles uh, at Cheltenham and he won. Uh, we got him a 12-1 to 1 that day, which seemed brilliant. Hasn't run since. Uh, he's off a mark at 142, but because he's a four-year-old, he's getting allowances, so he's only running off a mark at, or running off a weight of 10 stone 5. And a four-year-old have a desperate record in this race, which would put you off him. But I think 11-1 to 1 is worth a chance each way. I think he is a progressive horse. I think he'll be better than a 140 horse in time. Uh, so hopefully he might be able to show uh, his true colours. Mark Walsh, obviously in good form, having won at the Galway Plate today. And the one at a bigger price is Drew Reward at 33 to 1. Uh, run off a mark 137, was second in this race last year off a 132, I think, uh, for Mark Enright. Uh, Rachel Blackmore's riding this time out. Rachel Blackmore, I assume, had the chance of riding a few of Henry's here. So it's interesting that she picks Drew Reward. Maybe I, maybe she was always going to, I'm not so sure. Uh, this horse was a decent sixth on reappearance uh, at Ballon Robe, I think, uh, which would have hopefully put him right for this race. He went chasing last year, the wheels slightly came off he's another one of these de Bromhead horses on a bit of a retrieval mission the 715 a two mile four furlong novice hurdle obviously uh, completely depends on whether the very man will take um his place in this race i'm going to be back in john snow i'm putting him up here at two to one obviously if the very man is a non-runner this will be a massive massive rule four uh but i'm putting him up at, at two to one if the very man runs i'd still back john snow i do think there's a better horse in john snow than we saw last year took him four starts to get off, off the mark over hurdles but at one stage he's being talked up as a supreme novice's chance uh, it didn't quite go to plan that time but I'm oh, sorry, last year, but he ran in a few decent enough maiden hurdles, was behind Front View, the boss's Oscar, and um, there was another one, another horse that I, I, I've forgotten, but he then went on to win a Leopardstown maiden hurdle beating Fakiera. Uh, he was pretty poor on reappearance on the flat over a mile four, I think it was, uh, but he should be better for that. Uh, I do think there's bits to come from this horse um, in time. I don't know whether that's going to be in handicaps or whether it's going to be in graded races, but I'm going to take a chance on him. And uh, as I say, I'm just not so sure. The very man is 8-13. to 13. Is he going to run? I don't even know. So I'm going to put up John Snow as a bit of a safer option. The 7.45, a three-mile handicap hurdle. Uh, quite like one at each way price here. Moy Ode Girl uh, for Jimmy Nash. Gavin Bruder takes off seven. Uh, this, run, uh, this mare running off a mark of 107, so in effect running off 100. Won a maiden at Fairly House last year uh, over two miles four before finishing second and third in two handicaps after so so second twice i think uh, in two handicaps beaten only three quarter of a length on first time out over three miles seems a stout stare i think there's better things to come from this mare she ran a poor race last time out at limerick but she was uh, in season that day so you can completely rule a line through that. She should be better for that. And hopefully she can run a big race, big race at a double figure price. The 8.15, the concluder, the bumper. Mullins won one of the two bumpers uh, today. And I'm going to back him to win the bumper tomorrow on power of pause. A uh, highly regarded sort having won his point to point. Uh, but it's flopped twice over, um, on twice in rules uh, races. Sorry, I'm getting my... Um, my words mixed up there. I was turned over Turles at long odds on and then drifted like a barge before running poorly at Leopardstown uh, near the back end of the season. Hopefully better ground will suit. Uh, the rain did get in a little bit, but hopefully if it's a drying day tomorrow, which is meant to be over here in Ireland, better ground will suit this horse. He won his point to point on good ground. I think he is still highly regarded. And usually uh, the owner has horses that develop a little bit later you know the likes of carefully selected appreciated uh you know if you're basing it off them which i know maybe you shouldn't do uh, this horse might come you know better in time so hopefully he'll be able to land a bumper he's, he's up against a decent enough uh joseph o'brien horse but i think it might be just between the two of them and then over in Goodwood, I've got five for you. The uh, first five races on the card, I've got a selection for each. The 110 is a five furlong three-year-old handicap. I'm going to be backing Show Me, Show Me at a best price of nine to one for Richard Fahey and Paddy Mathers, who uh, won a race with a well-backed horse at Thirsk this evening. Uh, this horse was third in the Molecombe last year. Uh, hasn't quite 
cut it this year since being gelded and since joining Richard Fahey's yard. And he's back to a mark of 92 here. The mark is beginning to tumble. He obviously likes it around Goodwood. It is a competitive handicap, but 9-1 is not a bad each-way price. The 145 is a mile two furlong handicap, and I'm going to take a chance at, on Starcat at 14-1 to one each way. This horse won a Kempton maiden before finishing 7th in the 2000 Guineas, which is a really good effort. Bombed out at Ascot last time out in the race won by Calusi. Uh, who I really, really fancy uh, for Friday if he lines up in the thoroughbred stakes. Uh, but the ground went against him that day. And with the return to better ground and up in two furlongs today should be in Starcat's favour and hopefully can run well for Huey Morrison and Oshin Murphy. The 2.15 is the six furlong Richmond stakes, a group two race. I'm going to take a chance on Admiral Nelson here. Bombed out in the Coventry when only finishing eighth, but had previously won a really good uh, Curra Maiden beating a stable mate Merchant's Key who's gone on to frank the form since then. Uh, I obviously did this last week with More Beautiful where I took that chance and that didn't um, pay its way anyway but I, I'm going to give Admiral Nelson a big chance there. 5-1 to one, I think is a fair price. 2.45, the Gordon Stakes over mile four. Last time going here in the Gordon for Mogul. I know some people on Twitter call him Mongrel. That may be fair enough. Uh, he's 11-2. to two. I'm going to be scummy, put him up each way. I know it's only a two-place race, but 11-2 to two each way. Uh, it wouldn't be really a bet I'd usually have, but uh, it has to happen at some stage for Mogul, surely. And I'm not going to be the one that deserts him and then he wins. So... Um, his run in the Derby was decent. Uh, hopefully, he'll have come forward again for that race. Like Aidan O'Brien keeps telling me, he will come forward for these runs. Aidan, please make sure he'll have come forward at some stage. He's got English King uh, reappearing, also Al Azi. It's a decent enough little race, uh, but hopefully, he can run well. And the 315, the Nassau Stakes. Uh, I'm going to be staying uh, with Deirdre here again, 11 to 2. Uh, for Ushin Murphy, uh, the Japanese horse obviously won this race last year, 20 to 1. Has won some nice races since, uh, ran nice races in both uh, the Irish Champion Stakes and the English Champion Stakes last year. Put in a really nice reappearance run behind Gayat, only beaten three and a half lengths in the end into fifth. Uh, that form, I think, almost is the best in here, to be honest, with, with the likes of Gayat and Abel in Japan uh, in front of Deirdre that day. Obviously, Magic Wand to reappear against again. Also, the likes of Fancy Blues getting a lot of weight. But I think Deirdre likes Goodwood. And I think there is another group one in this mare. Hopefully for the Japanese contingent. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Obviously, when there's a lot of races to get through, it is a little bit more rushed. Uh, I do apologise for that. But, you know, I'm trying to get the this sort of content out for you guys. If you guys did enjoy, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel down below. And, of course, let me know if you have any fancies for tomorrow at Galway or Goodwood so we can hopefully keep backing a few winners. Two, uh, two small but, you know, profitable days the last two days. So hopefully we can continue on with that. And until tomorrow evening, stay safe, stay lucky, hopefully land a few bets, and I'll see you guys then. Cheers.